ان الحمد لله نحمد ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد uh, last week we began speaking about the second fundamental which is uh, the religion of Islam or knowing the religion of Islam um, and we went through the first part of it or from the from the book which is talking about Islam or the level of Islam and that uh, the level of Islam is five pillars or five parts the Shahada or the Shahadatain the Salat the Zakat fasting and Hajj and we s- spoke about that uh, there's a consensus from the ulama of Ahl sunnah or even from the Muslimin that uh, from the time of the Sahaba up until now that someone who doesn't say the Shahadatain or this doesn't say the Shahada is more precise that uh, he isn't Muslim and then we spoke or we said that even saying the Shahada isn't sufficient um, and that no one has ever said that just saying the Shahada is sufficient except for a group called the Karamiya. Um, then we spoke about the Salat and we said that uh, the evident, that there's a difference of opinion amongst Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah about whether leaving the Salat makes one leave Islam or not. Um, and we mentioned some of the evidences for that. And like I said, the reason for mentioning this in this portion of the lesson or at this stage isn't to say what is the strongest. The point of it is to say that this opinion is out there and that Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah they believe that in order to be Muslim certain actions have to be performed just like in order to be Muslim or in order to leave Islam this can take place by actions as well and just like statements are the same thing so certain statements are needed in order for someone to be a Muslim and likewise someone can leave Islam by a statement that they say so the point of this is more to show that it's a consensus from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah from the time of the Sahaba up until now that in order for someone to be Muslim he needs to have some sort of action and then they differ on whether that's the Salat or the Salat and Zakat and Salat and Zakat fasting and Hajj and so on Uh, this is the point of this so it's more of just to open people's minds to see that Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah does not hold in in any level the belief that as long as someone has Iman in their heart that that's something that's sufficient for the person to be Muslim mm. so we left off with the Salat uh, last uh, and we mentioned some of the ayat and the ahadith about it um, and we mentioned that um, it's a consensus from the Sahaba that someone who leaves the Salat uh, has left Islam the only difference of opinion in interpreting this or in interpreting what the Sahaba meant by this is whether one Salat is sufficient to leave Islam or whether it should be the majority and so on which we'll get into like I said again this isn't a point to to reach what's the strongest opinion in this right now the point is to see how uh, important Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah holds these to be so the next um, the next of the five pillars which the scholars have spoken about and again this is one that they've differed on as to whether someone uh, leaving it whether they have they've, if they've left Islam or not and they've differed upon it, uh, like we mentioned, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned that there's three opinions, or the, that there's a number of opinions attributed to Imam Ahmad. Um, so with zakat, there's three. And this is likewise the ulam, other scholars have differed based upon this as well. So the first is that if someone doesn't perform the zakat, or sorry, pay the zakat, they can still be Muslim. The second is that if they don't pay it, and they fight upon not paying it. So the Imam comes to them to take it from them, and they fight in order to withhold it, that they leave Islam with this. But if they merely withheld it, then this wouldn't take them out of Islam. The third opinion is that merely withholding it, regardless of whether they fight to withhold it or not, that this would be sufficient for uh, for the person to leave Islam. So all these, all of these three opinions with regards to the zakat, are opinions of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So, so, the first was that it doesn't. So that it doesn't, doesn't, yeah. Not paying doesn't take you. Right. So you'd be sinful, a major sin, 
but you'd still be Muslim. And the second is that it would be th- is the same except unless they fought upon it. And the third is merely withholding it is uh, remove someone from Islam. And like I said, all of these are opinions of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So if someone takes this, we should even if we disagree with it, one of them, we shouldn't say that either. Uh, if we hold it to be not, or that it doesn't remove someone from Islam, we shouldn't then hold someone who takes this opinion and say he's an extremist, or that he is upon uh, an innovation, or he's from the Khawarij, or something like this. Because this is an opinion of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Um, and some of the evidence, so we'll just talk about the evidence. And, and like I said before, I'm stressing the evidence that these things do remove someone from Islam. Not because... I'm saying that this is the correct opinion, but because it needs to be known that this evidence is out there, because uh, it's very widespread that people will always uh, repeat the evidences from the Quran and Sunnah that someone with a pure heart will enter Jannah, and someone who says La ilaha illallah will enter Jannah. And we believe in all these things, but we need to know the other side of the coin or the other um, uh, side of opinions to see that uh, where does the balance fall, because Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. We take things in balance. We don't go to one extreme and we don't go to the other extreme either. So Allah SWT says, In Surah At-Tawbah, it's the same verse that we mentioned about the Salat, that if they um, repent and establish the Salat and pay the Zakat, then they are your brothers in the religion. And like we said, Allah SWT has said, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً Or only the believers, or the believers are but brothers or only the believers are brothers or so on is you can translate it what the ayah and surah to tawbah but if they repent and pay the and, and establish the salat and pay the zakat then they're your brothers in the religion uh, and um in the ayah before that as well, which is similar, which we talked about in the, in the zakat or in the salat as well. فَانْتَابُوا وَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَأَتَوا الزَّكَاتِ فَخَلُّوا سَبِيلَهُمْ Or if they, uh, if they uh, repent and establish the salat and pay the zakat, then open their way for them or, or remo- move out of their way or um, leave their way free. So meaning don't stop them or don't fight them and so on. So this is uh, one of the evidences that they use. And also another evidence which we spoke about um, is the hadith from Abu Huraira that the Prophet Sallallahu or from Ibn Umar that the Prophet Sallallahu said أُمِرْتُ أَنْ نُقَاتِلَ النَّاسِ حَتَّى يَشْهَدُوا أَنْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَأَنِّي وَرَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَيَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ وَيَأْتُوا الزَّكَاةِ فَإِنْ فَعَلُوا ذَلِكَ فَقَدْ عَصَمُوا مِنِّي دِمَاءَهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ إِلَّا بِحَقِّهَا وَحِسَابُهُمْ عَلَى اللَّهِ or the hadith which we mentioned last uh, last week about the salat that the Prophet Sallallahu said I was ordered to fight the people until they testify to La ilaha illallah and that I am the Messenger of Allah um, and that they establish the Salat and that they pay the Zakat. Then if they do that, then they have protected their blood and their wealth from me except in its right, so meaning in the right of Islam and in other narrations in the, in the right of the Shahada uh, and their reckoning is with Allah. So again, this hadith shows that the Prophet wasallam placed the Salat and the Zakat at the same level of the shahada in someone entering Islam. So, uh, 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 Ibn Umar. The third opinion that it's in and of itself With is. Takes out of Islam. Right. Oh, okay. And again, like I said, I'm not saying that this is the correct yeah, yeah. opinion, but no, you need show to exa- support that this is an ev- that it, it is a valid opinion. So three of them are valid. All three are valid. I mean, still we would look, well, what's the strongest? Exactly. We still look to the Quran and Sunnah. If we're convinced, if we're genuinely convinced that one of them is stronger, then we take that opinion. But at the same time, we don't say that, if, say for example, if I took the opinion that just leaving the zakat is, takes someone out of Islam, I can't then go and say to someone who says, I don't believe that. I can't ex- or say that he's... Too le- he's too lenient or he's he's from the murji or he's from a group of bid'ah because he's not calling this person a kafir or something that this is the this is the difference when we talk about the opinions of ahl sunnah wal jama'ah and the opinions of groups of bid'ah because they're completely different ahl sunnah we look at things based upon the evidence from the quran and sunnah we don't bring false um, uh, 
rules or false beliefs and then base things upon that. So like if, if we say leaving Salat is, is kufr, why do we say that? Do we say it's kufr because it's a sin? Or do we say it's kufr because the evidence from the Quran and Sunnah shows that this act or leaving this act is kufr? Of course the second one. We don't say every sin takes someone out of Islam. If someone performs zina, if someone steals, if someone drinks alcohol, if they uh, if they take riba or if they give riba, if all these things, we don't consider these people to be to have left Islam. We consider them sinful. If they make tawbah, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it. If they die, it's possible they'll enter Jannah without any punishment. Or if they're punished, they'll enter Jannah eventually. So this is what we hold when it comes to major sins. Unlike the khawarij who say any sin remove someone from Islam. So this is the difference. And likewise, we don't say the opposite like the like other groups, like the murjia who say any or, uh, iman is only in the heart. So it doesn't matter what someone does on their body or on their tongue or what they leave from the statements and actions. As long as they have they have the belief in the heart, then they're Muslim. We take it in between. So when we so this is these are things that we need to keep in mind. Do you want to keep questions to that? It's probably better, yeah. Uh, unless it's related specifically like to where's an evidence. Like so then we then I I'll try to remember to say them. <coughs> also uh, another evidence that some of the scholars have used is from the from the Quran or from uh, the ayat of the Quran is that Allah SWT says فَاسْتَقِيمُوا إِلَيْهِ وَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ وَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ بِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ كَافِرُونَ Which translates as um, uh, Therefore, take a straight path to him, meaning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, and, obe- and obedience to him and seek his forgiveness and woe to the, to the mushrikeen or to the polytheists those who do not give the zakat and they are disbelievers in the hereafter so, Fussilat 7. But don't they have like uh, non Muslim people and Muslim people? Mm-hmm. So then we would consider that person non Muslim. Right, yeah, so inshallah we'll get into the uh, 7. Fussilat. So, this uh, another evidence from the Quran, and also if we look to the the seerah of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum that we'll find in in, uh, in, in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim as well and, and elsewhere that Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu he said لَمَّا تَوَفِّيَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ وَكَانَ أَبُو بَكْرِ رَضِيَ عَنْهُ وَكَفَرَ مَنْ كَفَرَ مِنَ الْعَرَبِ فَقَالَ عُمَرْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ كَيْفَ تُقَاتِلُ النَّاسِ وَقَدْ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ أُمِرْتُ أَنْ أُقَاتِلَ النَّاسِ حتى يقول لا إله إلا الله فمن فعل ذلك فقد فمن قالها فقد عصم مني ماله وماله ودم ونفسه إلا بحقه وحسابه على الله فقال يعني أبو بكر والله لا لا أقاتل من فر الصلاة والزكاة فإن الزكاة حق المال or from Abu Huraira that he said when the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم passed away and it was Abu Bakr in charge and those from amongst the Arab who disbelieved, disbelieved, Umar said, meaning to Abu Bakr, how can you fight the people? And, they, and, you, and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, I was ordered to fight the people until they say, La ilaha illallah. And if they say it, then they have protected their blood, or their wealth and their blood from me, except in its right. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, by Allah, I will fight those who differentiate between the Salat and the Zakat. Uh, as the zakat is the uh, right of the wealth. And like I said, this agreed upon, and that's al-Bukhari's phrasing. So the scholars here have mentioned two things in this hadith. The first is when uh, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu was speaking about these people, he said, وَكَفَرَ مَنْ كَفَرَ مِنَ الْعَرَبِ Or those from amongst the Arab who disbelieved, disbelieved. So he's speaking about the people who refused to pay the zakat, and he call, he said, and those who dis. so he's, Referring to them that they have disbelieved And then the second part is when um, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said Wallahi la'uqatilanna man farraqa bayna salati wa zakat So if we know that there's a consensus from the Sahaba radiallahu anhum That leaving the salat was uh, was an act of kufr Then they say here Abu Bakr is saying By Allah I will, dif- I will fight those who differentiate between the salat and the zakat So he's holding them to be at the same level 
So this is the way they, they um, uh, use this hadith as evidence. Um, and yeah. That they that they do one and not the other, so the ones who the ones who hold it this hadith to be evidence they say that they held them at the same level. Other ones say uh, the ones who don't agree they say no. What what Abu Bakr meant was that um, uh, that the one that what is meant is the ones who he was fighting had rejected the zakat. So the ones who accepted the salat and they didn't accept the, the zakat, I'll fight them until they accept both of them. And Allah alam that's a weaker op- opinion because. Uh, it's it, it's impossible that Abu Bakr and Umar were different were differing regarding people who didn't accept the zakat. So it's impossible that uh, that uh, Umar radiAllahu anhu would look at people who rejected the zakat from Islam and said we don't accept it from being part of Islam, and then he would say his statement that weren't you only ordered to fight the people if they say la ilaha illallah? Someone who rejects something as high as the zakat as being not part of Islam, how could it be that Umar of all people? Let alone, uh, or so, the Sahaba wouldn't do that. The Tabi'i people nowadays, if someone if someone came to someone and said, "He, what do you say about a person who says zakat isn't from Islam?" Even the the general, you know, person would say, "How this person can't be Muslim?" Like the, the third of the of the five uh, pillars of Islam, he's saying, "Not only do I'm not going to do it, it's not even from Islam." So it's impossible that a Sahabi, let alone Umar radiAllahu anhu, would would uh, hold this opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is about the hadith we talked about uh, Prophet said uh, I will fight till the Shahada. Yeah. Uh, I was reading last time. They, the, these, uh, mm-hmm. I forgot the. Uh, was I reading the book? But, mm-hmm. uh, it was concerning the hadith like this, where it said only La ilaha illallah, and uh, I, uh, I forgot which scholar. I think Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin was explaining when he said. Some of these statements when the Prophet ﷺ said the other like salah wasn't mandatory yet and zakat wasn't mandatory yet, that's why like at that time saying la ilaha illallah was enough, was sufficient to be a Muslim. It, it could be, it could also be that because when we inshallah we'll get deeper into the Muslim al Iman or the reality of Iman, there's a difference between uh, they call it Al Islam al Haqiqi wal Islam al Hukmi or the Islam in reality and Islam on the on the like ruling. So if you were say you were in battle and someone said La ilaha illallah, that's in this point it's sufficient to consider this person Muslim. But if he's taken and he says okay I'm gonna and then he just said I'm not gonna pray, the other parts come into into. So at different levels, we say you know depending on the situation, certain things are sufficient to judge that this person is a Muslim in this situation, but in another situation it might not be. So al hukm would be on the battle. Or even in the dunya, to meet someone and you see him praying, you assume he's Muslim, right? Yeah, yeah. But he, maybe this person, maybe in in reality, he's not Muslim. Yeah. Maybe he believes things, he says things, he does things. That's not on us. So at at this point, salat is sufficient for us to judge that this person is Muslim, and so on. But it's kind of a yeah, yeah. Uh, or they call it Islam al dunya way. Yeah. Isn't it sorry? Isn't it also like some mm-hmm. some of the hadith used to refer to? Mm-hmm. The Prophet used to refer to it's it's a uh, like it's specifically about c- certain situations. Could be sometimes, like, yeah. Like the iman is uh, you know uh, like guarding your tongue or uh, yeah. right. So or if or someone can't come and say body. everything else is not from iman. Exactly. We have to take everything together. Exactly. Right. So would it be right to say that in terms of the level, uh, <coughs> zakat and salah? They, they both are at the same level? This is one of the opinions, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you cannot be, uh, you cannot accept one and reject one. Or right, or you can't do one and not the other. Well, so that's, yes, that's yeah, right. like so, okay. that's one of the opinions and, uh, you know, like, uh, yeah. And a number of ulama have mentioned that these, pe- not, not in general, but the people that the Sahaba were fighting, there was a consensus that they were kuffar. Right. So, uh, like Al-Qadi Ayyad, or sorry, Al-Qadi uh, Abu Ya'al uh, uh, mentioned this in Masail al-Iman um, and Abu Bakr al-Jassas and a number of others mentioned that the people who the Sahaba were fighting, they were, they were disbelievers, they left Islam because they based this upon this discussion with Umar and the way the Sahaba dealt with them. Because if you're fighting, um, for example, Muslimin who have fought against Muslimin, there's certain rulings that you have to follow. So if, if we consider these people Muslimin and for example they're attacking other Muslimin and we're trying to stop them, they would have certain rulings on how you deal with them. You can't, if they flee, you can't chase them. 
if they're injured, you can't finish them off. You can't take their wealth and and their their and so on as uh, as uh, property. Uh, but if they're if they're apostates, then it's 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 fine. You if you if someone was injured, you're allowed to finish them off. If they flee, you're allowed to, to follow them to catch them and so on. So the way the Sahaba dealt with these people is they fought them in the second way. So the, so many of the ulama have stated that there's a con, that Sahaba had consensus that that these people were disbelievers. So this so one might say, well then how is there a difference of opinion on if if leaving the zakat is kufr or not? This the reason for this is some say. In and of itself, leaving the zakat is in kufr, but these people were fighting to withhold it. So this is why um, uh, fighting it is a condition, or fighting upon it is a condition. Other ones say, no, these people rejected the zakat from being from Islam. Other ones said it was only for the Prophet wasallam, and he was like a king. So when he passed away, um, then we don't have to pay it anymore. And they, and they would mention the verse, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ sadaqa." Um, or take from their wealth as a sadaqah, so referring to the Prophet Sallallahu So they say, well, he's passed away now, we don't have to pay it, and so on. So this a long discussion on this, but the point of it is to see that all of these opinions were opinions of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, um, and they're important to know, even if we don't agree with them, they're important to know that this is how Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah looks at things. They don't look at it and say, well, this was an action, so it couldn't have been something that took them out of Islam. Yeah. Sorry, but uh, what you're saying about how people would say like, uh, it's only for Rasulullah Yeah. Mm-hmm. Isn't that exactly what the Arabs said, and that's the reason why Abu Bakr was so difficult Some of them said that. But mo- well, Some of them were just cheap and didn't want to pay. Some of them said that. <coughs> then the ones who were cheap kind of used it as an excuse, right? Well, no, some of them just say, I'm just not going to pay it. Like, they just were cheap. So some people have said, no, the Sahaba, they, were f- they fought them all together and dealt with them all together. In the same way But this is a very dangerous thing to say about the Sahaba Because would we say that the Sahaba would Fight apostates like apostates And then because there's Muslimin around We're going to fight them like the apostates as well It's impossible they would have done this So you had For example in Hulub or Ridda, you had You had the ones who followed the false prophets Like Musa and Malkadda And, and, and right. those other guys And then you had the and then you had these people who refused to pay zakah, and of them there were two categories. Right. Right. So which ones did they fight as apostates? They all of them. Murti. They fought all of them. All of them, yeah. Even the ones who were just cheap and they want to pay, and the right. ones who said you don't have to pay. It? Right. Oh. So that's why others come and say, well, no, they fought them. They say they say they fought them like because they were all together or because they weren't differentiating between oh, them. Agree, but this is a very dangerous thing to say about Abu Bakr and Omar and all these Sahaba that. Yeah, they consider these people to be Muslimin, but because it's just easier or because we're not going to take the time to differentiate or whatever, we're going to fight them all as no, apostates. It's very... Example, if, I have, if I have an army of Munafiqin coming and fighting against, against me, I'm not going to go kill even the Muslimin in their villages, you know? Exactly, like he wouldn't go, unless, I mean, if they were mixed in, that's a different issue, but the point is that they dealt with them all and didn't. they didn't try to, they didn't say, do you reject it or not, and then fight them a different way. They dealt with them all the same, so that's... That's where the the strength of the the one of the opinions comes out. But inshallah, we'll get into more details about that in another time. Um, from the last uh, halaqah and today, about the zakat and salat, uh, you were saying like there is three opinions, right? But according to the uh, the kutub books, the Sahaba they took the opinion that if you delay the salat, some of them say you are a kafir. Right. So according to the alim of knowledge, knowledge sharia. First, you follow Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. follow the Sahaba. Why we, some of scholars, they don't follow the Sahaba in this issue? Well, some of they might say it's ishtihad, and we have the Nusus. So the Nusus are more deserving of being taken. Yani they'll say, uh, we have the text from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about the leaving the Salat as Kufr, but we have other texts from him as well that shows it's not. So the Sahaba took this. We're, we're going to take the ahadith on this and this and, and reconcile them. That's more, yani, awla, it's more deserving to be followed than opinion of the Sahaba. But the, yani, someone might look at it and say, well, no, the, the ahadith, the, they all prove the same thing, and the Sahaba agreed. So that's, yani, that's where it comes to, uh, uh, like, why there's a difference of opinion. So, yeah, this is jihad from the both sides, from the Sahaba and the Dharma. We whether it yeah, yeah, like we'll say inshallah they're both rewarded. Sure. This, yani, I mean, all the Sahaba, yani, they're, 
if they have ijma'ah or even yani, close to ijma'ah, then they should be followed more than the people after them. So this is about the zakat. The next thing is about the psalm. The psalm, there's less evidence for it, um, but still there's some. So the first thing that they mention is the hadith from uh, from Abdullah bin Umar that he said, Buni al-Islamu ala khams, and one of them was psalm Ramadan, or that Islam was built upon five or... And one of those five was fasting Ramadan. So they say this hadith shows that Islam is built upon five. If one of them is gone, then the whole thing is gone. So they use this hadith. They also mention a hadith from uh, Abdullah bin Abbas that he said, Ura al-Islam thalath buni al-Islam wa alayha. Man taraka minha wahida fahuwa halal dam Shahadatu an la ilaha illallah was-salah was Ramadan or that uh, Abdullah bin, uh, bin Abbas that he said the knots of Islam are three upon which Islam was built whoever leaves one of them his blood is permitted so meaning that like he's left Islam and, and, and uh, you know he would be deserving of the of the had of Ridda if you guys this is it's a weak hadith so whether you guys want to write it or not <laughs> thank you <laughs> Uh, some do, yeah. Let's yeah, that's who is that from? Ibn Umar. Yeah, it's in Bukhari and Muslim. So they use this. It's narrated by Abu Yala in his Musnad, um, but it's a weak hadith. So I mean, it wouldn't be use, usable as evidence. But also some, then others say, well, if the leaving, if not saying the shahada is disbelief, not uh, praying is disbelief, not get, paying the zakat is disbelief, according to that opinion, then fasting is in the same hadith of Islam being built upon five, then it only makes sense that this would also, um, would also be uh, something that removes someone from Islam. So this is the evidence that there is for, for the psalm. There's not as much, obviously, as the other ones, but this is what's mentioned. <clears throat> so lastly is about the Hajj So uh, the first evidence that they use Again this is another one that they've dis- differed on The first evidence is that Allah SWT says وَلَلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مِنَ اسْتَطَاعِ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ Which translates as And Allah is deserving or has the right of a Hajj Upon the people uh, to his house or to the house So meaning the Kaaba for whoever is able to do so, and whoever disbelieves, then indeed Allah is not in need of any of the alameen or any of the of the, of the worlds. The hajj, right? What's that? The reason, the reason this is what the ones who say that it's disbelief. This is what they use. Yeah. So, what was that? Uh, it's Ali Amran, ninety-seven. So they use this, and then they use um, a weak narration from Umar ibn Khattab that he said. لقد هممت أن أبعث رجالا إلى إلى هذه الأمصار فينظر كل من كان له جدة ولم يحج فيضرب عليهم عليهم الجزية ما هم بمسلمين ما هم بمسلمين which translates as that Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله عنه said I have the intention or I wish I could send men to these to these townships and that they would look who has um, an, enough uh, wealth or enough uh, provisions um, and he has not made hajj and then that they would implement the jizya upon them they are not muslims they are not muslims but like i said this is a weak hadith it's narrated by al-hasan and or sorry al-hasan narrated it from umar and al-bayhaqi collected it but al-hasan didn't he, his narrations from umar are weak because he didn't hear from umar so this is where why it's weak there's a break in the chain there but at the same time there is an authentic narration um, from abdurrahman ibn ghanam that he said, or he heard Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu saying, "Man ataq al Hajj, falam yahij, fasawa un alayhi mata Yahudiyan or Nasraniya." Which translates as uh, Abd Rahman ibn Ghanam said that he heard Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu saying, um, "Whoever um, whoever is able um, to perform Hajj and he does not perform Hajj, then it is equal for him whether he dies as a Jew or a Christian." Um, and that's narrated by Al-Bayhaqi and Al-Ismaili, um, and it's an authentic narration. Um, so this is the evidence is 
showing that it's that these actions are disbelief. And like I said, the first, so the, the shahada, there's a consensus on this from all of the Muslimin, except for the, the karamiyah, like I said, and we don't take them into account um, when it comes to ijma. The second about the salat, there's a consensus from the sahaba that it's disbelief, but then afterwards, um, there was a dis- there was a dispute, like after at the end of the time of the tabi'in is when the dispute about the salat used to, began, and it, it grew further after that. And I don't think we mentioned it. The evidence for the consensus of the Sahaba is a narration from Abdullah bin Shaqiq al uqayli narrated by Imam al Tirmidhi, that he said, the Sahaba of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not used to view the leaving of anything to be disbelief except for the salat. Or from Abdullah bin Shaqiq al uqayli that he said, كان صحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يرون شيئا من الأعمال تركه كفر إلا الصلاة. So this shows that uh, all the Sahaba, or he was narrating a, a consensus of the Sahaba that they, as a group, didn't believe that any leaving any action was disbelief except for the Salat yeah. Sahaba. So this is from Abdullah bin Shaqiq al uqayli who was from the Tabi'een, uh, and this is narrated by Tirmidhi, and it's authentic. So he, yeah. Sorry, can you just, uh, what's it called, repeat the hadith of Abdurrahman bin Ghanam? Yeah, yeah, that he, that he said that he heard uh, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu saying, whoever is able to perform hajj, and he has not performed hajj, or does not perform hajj, then it is equal for him if he dies as a Jew or a Christian. al <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that Umar said that if someone is able to do Hajj and he doesn't do it, then it's the same for him whether he dies as a Jew or a Christian. So some of them say some of them use this to show that Umar considered if if you don't perform Hajj then you're not Muslim. It doesn't matter whether you die as a Jew or a Christian. It's not gonna. I mean, you're 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 not Muslim. Uh, huh? And others said that no, he it was a statement from Umar showing how. Severe not doing Hajj is from for someone who's able. So, you know that's where the dispute comes from understanding the statement of Umar radiallahu anhu. Um, yeah. If someone opened this issue about the salat and uh, he was saying the last the last yeah, and he used all the adilla was the dal ayam the hadith of Allah ibn Abbas or the Islamic Torah. Hmm. Have you know it's weak? Or there is some other hadith, some other ayat will support this meaning. And we know in the Amir hadith, there is other hadith will support this hadith. We can use it as a dalil, as long as the meaning is right. Well, there's a lot more conditions. The meaning has to be right. It has to be the same hadith. And if it's a different hadith, even if the meaning is the same, uh, and you, you can't really support it. So we would say this is a different hadith even, because the only one that mentions uh, shahada, salat, and fasting only, is this hadith? There's no other no other hadith um, that mentions this, and there's also other conditions like and it can't be severely weak, and you may kun shadid al but this this is shadid al so it wouldn't be. So there's lots of other conditions. So we would say this is an opinion, but using this evidence is is, is uh, not uh, not strong though. You can just use the other hadith by Abdullah ibn Abdullah ibn Right. Yeah, that would be. Except this one is this one is clearer though because it says his 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 uh, blood would be permitted so it's a lot more clear but it's it's a weak hadith like we said and then just to mention about um, it ending this topic is that <clears throat> the opinion that all five would remove someone from Islam it's the opinion of some of the tabi'in so Nafi it's attributed to Nafi uh, Mawla bin Umar. Um, so this is the first one, also Al-Hasan and Al-Hakam ibn Utaybah and Sa'id ibn Jubair. So these are the ones from the Tabi'een that it's attributed to. It's also the opinion of Ishaq ibn Rahuya, who is from the Imams of, of, of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, um, from the early, early Imams of them. It's also one of the opinions that's attributed to Imam Ahmed. Um, and some of his companions took it. So some of the uh, Hanabila took this opinion as well like uh, Abu Bakr al-Khalal and others, uh, from what I remember, and also from the Malikiya, um, uh, Abdul Malik ibn, uh, uh, Abdul Malik ibn Habib 
took this opinion as well. So it's it's an established opinion amongst the Ahlul Sunnah that the five of them. It's it's definitely the minority opinion, but the point of it is it's a valid opinion. And inshallah, when we get to a, a more detailed topic on this issue, we'll talk about both sides. We'll talk about the evidences that are used, how each side rejects the other one, and so on, so we get a better grasp. The point of it is just to show, like I said, that this is these are valid opinions. Yeah. So that's the end of that topic specifically about what's the ruling. So next, I just want to touch on a few points before we finish this. The 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 when it comes to saying la ilaha illallah, like I had mentioned a little bit earlier, that even when it comes to the beliefs or what's in the heart, even the ones who say that these five aren't a condition or that these four salat and zakat and hajj and and, and psalm that these things wouldn't leave some, take someone out of Islam. They all they place other conditions upon saying La ilaha illallah. And they call it the conditions of La ilaha illallah, or shurut La ilaha illallah. Um, and some of the scholars mention that there's seven, some mention eight, some mention other numbers. It just depends on how you divide these categories. So inshallah, I'll just mention a bit about this. I'm going to mention the, uh, or I'll go based upon the opinion that there's seven, just because it's easier to go through. Conditions for la ilaha illallah. Well, I can't remember. I'm not sure. Could be. I can't. It could be. Uh, yeah. yeah. So the first thing that the scholars say that is a condition for la ilaha illallah. So someone saying la ilaha illallah is it going to be accepted or not? Um, is that they must they have to have knowledge of what la ilaha illallah means. So if someone you know, people will think, oh, if you can trick someone into saying la ilaha illallah, or you write it in English and then someone just reads it, that they're going to be Muslim or something, this is completely false. Actually, uh, sorry, it happened actually. Yeah, people even, they say stories of like, there's like a professor in his college and he said, he put it on the board and said to everyone, read this, no. and he said, oh, you're all Muslim now. And they're like, things like... <laughs> the people don't even know what he's, they're saying. <laughs> so this is the first thing that we say they have to actually know what it means and the evidence for this is when Allah SWT says فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَاسْتَغْفِرُ لِذَنْبِكِ which means uh, so know that there is no God except Allah or nothing worthy of worship except Allah and seek uh, forgiveness for your sins and that's from Surah Muhammad verse 19 so Allah SWT is telling us to know this He's not just saying say it We have to know what it means Otherwise what's the point of saying it So this is the first thing And secondly the uh, Hadith of Uthman ibn Affan عنه, That he said That the Prophet Sallallahu said Man mata wa huwa ya'lamu an la ilaha illallah Dakhala al-jannah <coughs> Or whoever dies This Hadith from Uthman ibn Affan That the Prophet Sallallahu said Whoever dies knowing that there is no God Or nothing worthy of worship except Allah He'll enter jannah and that's uh, uh, narrated by Imam Muslim, and it's obviously it's authentic. Which was the ayah? Nineteen Muhammad. So this is two evidences here. The Prophet ﷺ put a condition that whoever dies knowing this. So if they don't know this, then obviously they can't be Muslim, regardless of what they say or do. But if somebody comes to you now and tells you Christian knows there's nobody other where they worship other than Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, we'll say, well, what about the next conditions? But in this hadith, there is no second aspect of of, of the kalima, which is also believing on prophets. Right. So that's why you know we have to look to all the Sharia. We can't pick and choose and take a ruling from one text. We have to look at all the texts and understand them together. Because the Prophet was wasn't sent with one text. He was sent with you know everything he said was from the wahi. So we can't just take one thing and say. Well, this goes against something else he said, so you know we're only going to accept one of them. But no, but this this is the hadith that you mentioned, which is Umar by uh, Umar bin Affan, yes. Uthman bin Affan, yeah. Oh, Uthman. Okay. Yeah, so it means that, so we know that this uh, obviously we accept this, but we also know if someone doesn't know that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we know from other evidences that he it wouldn't be sufficient. 
So we take them all and put them together. Okay. So here what we, we what we would take from this is someone saying La ilaha illallah but not knowing it isn't sufficient. So he said that, you know, so you need to know what it means actually. Yeah. yeah. Shaykh, like uh, speaking about these hadith, you know, since we're talking about shurut, there's sabah. Yeah. A lot of the times, uh, like, uh, we'll be talking and discussing something, and someone gives you a hadith, you know, it's authentic 100%, and it's a hadith like this, uh, who says, La ilaha illallah, something like, Wajib, Ujibat lahu jannah, or yeah. something like that. Uh, like, uh, I understand myself, like, alhamdulillah, that, like, you can't understand the. The, the, the sunnah from one hadith, you know, or the deen from one hadith, and you go with it. So how can, like, what is the explanation to the people that, you know, you can tell them, okay, that hadith is authentic, but you have to, like, I don't know how to explain myself. Inshallah, we'll go after, we'll, after we'll talk about sure. that. So the second condition is having yaqeen or certainty. So if you know this, but you have doubts about la ilaha illallah, or you have doubts about the shahada, then this is also insufficient. So just knowing it, but having doubts isn't enough. Um, actually, you know what? We'll stop there. I'll answer that question and then. Close to that, yeah. <laughs> Some of them, yeah. So, like, Allah SWT placed or mentioned that the ones who will benefit from this are the ones who have no doubt about it. But, inshallah, uh, I don't want to go on too long, so we'll answer that question. Inshallah, we'll continue next week.